Hello and welcome, my friends. I am thrilled today to have Dr. Catherine Toomer, a fellow family doctor, with us today. Uh, she also works with clients um, helping people lose weight and have that permanent healthy weight loss. It is so important. Um, you're probably listening on the podcast, but but it, this will also be on YouTube if you want to see us talk in in uh, live motion. So. <laughs> Welcome, Dr. Toomer. I appreciate you being here. Thank you for having me. So could you tell my audience a little bit about yourself and what you do, please? Okay. Well, I mentioned I'm Dr. Catherine Toomer. I'm a family medicine and community health physician, and I'm the founder of Health Wellness and Weight Loss Centers. And what I do is I maximize health and wellness through weight loss, and then I optimize weight loss through very targeted um, health and wellness measures. And I started this because of my own need for help that I couldn't find 21 years ago when wow. I was 107 pounds heavier than I am now. Wow. Um, I was an insulin dependent diabetic and then went into congestive heart failure and no one would touch me when I asked for help. So I just basically helped myself, turned my, what I did into a program and now I help other people. Amazing. Well, what we wanted to share with the audience today was about weight loss medications. Mm -hmm. um, and Dr. Toomer, for my audience, has a lot of experience with this. And so that's why I invited her today to tell us more about those. So please go ahead. Well, um, I use, as I'm sure you're familiar with, a biopsychosocial approach mm -hmm. to any issue, but particularly to weight loss. And so when... Um, testing for the biological reasons that people gain weight, then I treat those reasons. And, um, and what, what often we associate with weight loss treatment are appetite suppressants like Adapex or Phenteramine, which I really don't prescribe very much. I can probably count on one hand the number of times I've prescribed it. But um, so what I do is I look for other reasons, primarily in, uh, reasons associated with glucose dysregulation, because that's really the most common reason that people gain weight right. is insulin resistance. So most people are on some type of continuum of diabetes, either they're full-blown diabetic or they're right on the verge of becoming insulin resistant or something in between. And depending on where someone is in that continuum, they could get by without medication, but sometimes they get to a point where they're sort of their physiology takes over and they mm -hmm. can't really control their cravings. They can't control their appetite. Their weight just seems to be going up no matter what they do. Um, and so um, that's when I step in. And so I use a lot of medications that were really designed for diabetes. Mm -hmm. But the reason those medications cause so much weight loss is because most people gain weight through their glucose dysregulation. So right. those diabetes medications work to cause, to prevent weight gain, but also then to reverse that weight gain. And they and they drop weight. And so um, that's what I test for. That's what I look for. And that is primarily what I treat and where I get the most um, uh, success. But I also uh, look for depression, anxiety, sure. and ADHD. And if I find those, depending on where they are on the scale, mm -hmm. we'll either do behavioral modification to try and change some of that. But if it's to the point where you know not treating does more harm than good, then I will treat those okay. as well. And those do help support then uh, weight loss because it changes someone's uh, behavior with food. It changes what happens to food once it's in their body. And mm -hmm. so um, it's really just, you know, it's as we call it the art of medicine. It's like, you, yeah. there's no cut, you know, cookie cutter way of dealing with anything. You just sort of tell based on the person where they are, what their goals are, how much motivation and discipline they have. And I use that very carefully because um, many times the psychosocial reasons that we gain weight, I myself, you know, was a hundred pounds, like I said, over a hundred pounds heavier than I am now. Much of that um, happened through stress. Sure. Oh yeah. It, you know, a stress and depression. And so, and my, because of my severe depression, I was, um, I had postpartum depression. I had chronic depression. I had just been diagnosed with the heart disease, heart disease, which also causes depression. Right. And so I had no motivation whatsoever. I knew what I had to do. 
and I just couldn't bring myself to do it. It was, sure, it was like yeah. pushing through molasses until I treated my depression. And then I had what it took. So like I said, I use discipline and motivation very uh, cautiously because we often get blamed as if it's something um, that we can control when sometimes it's out of our control. Right. I love that description you have of depression as trying to move through molasses. That is, mm -hmm. that's beautiful. That's really hits it, I think. Um, the medications, do they, you know, they're, it's funny because they are marketed both for diabetes and then sometimes with a different name just for weight loss and your insurance may or may not pay for one of those. And can you talk about that a little bit? Yes. Um, well, my actual, I'm a founder of health, wellness, and weight loss. And I always say in that order, I care about health. I care about wellness, but most of the people who walk through the door care about their weight <laughs> loss. Sure. <laughs> and pharmaceutical companies have figured that out also. Yeah. They realize that people will take medication for weight loss that they were actually prescribed for diabetes <laughs> that they refuse to take for their diabetes. But as soon as you tell them that it's for weight loss, they'll take it. Exact same medicine. It's just, so, you know, psychological. Yeah, you know, yeah. One is one is a diagnosis. One is, you know, I'm helping myself. And there's, a, you know, and I understand that. Yeah. But yeah. Um, so really what happened as they were, they realized though that um, this is what they said. They created it for diabetes. Now diabetes and medicine, mm -hmm. we're very strict on what that is. Right. It's when our hemoglobin A1C or what we use to check to see how much our blood sugars have been on average for three months, how um, high that is. And once it reaches 6.5, we want it mm -hmm. preferably in the fives or lower. But if it's 6.5 or higher, we diagnose that as diabetes. Unfortunately, people can be insulin resistant, pre-diabetic, on the verge right. of diabetes for up to 10 years before they actually shows up in their blood. And during that time, they're constantly gaining weight. Yeah, It's like it starts this vicious cycle of them craving sugar, eating sugar, blood sugar is going up, then craving more sugar. And it just starts this vicious cycle. Right. And so when the medications are said they're for diabetes, but then they cause weight loss, what they don't say is they're, they, the reason they cause weight loss is because they're treating all the stuff on the continuum before you become a diabetic. Right, right. And so when they say it helps people who aren't even diabetic lose weight, well, we're very strict on what we call diabetes. Sure. When really, I think the numbers should change, to be honest. Um, I think that we wait way too late to treat. I, when, where I trained at the University of Florida, we started treating diabetes much earlier than uh, what is recommended. Sure. And so I've always been very, very strict about that. Um, and which is actually how I stumbled across, this is long before we learned about the metabolic um, association with weight gain. Mm -hmm. For the past over 20, now 20 years now, I started, because I'm so strict with treating diabetes, I would treat my diabetics when their hemoglobin A1C was much lower than what is recommended. Okay. And of course they start losing weight. And as the word spread, people would come to me like, I hear you help people lose weight. No, right. I get your diabetes. I prevent diabetes and yeah. therefore you lose weight or you stop gaining. And that's really, really what I do. So the medications are primarily to uh, reverse or to regulate blood sugar, right. which are you know, byproduct of carbohydrates that we eat. The reason ketogenic diets work, the reason that um, many of the medications work that um, essentially just help our body, our brain get the message that we've eaten. And so we stop, it helps the blood sugar that, uh, get turned into fuel rather than fat. Mm -hmm. and, um, and the pharmaceutical companies have figured that out and right. so now they're just repackaging everything that they've used for diabetes. And now they're just repackaging it for, um, okay. for weight loss. So people who have an elevated A1C, because I I get a lot of people in my program as well who say my, my A1C was elevated and I was getting worried about diabetes, but they weren't at that 6.5. Mm -hmm. Can they get these medications covered? Yes. Yes. Okay. They can be. if. Um, if someone's willing to fart, but, fart, excuse me. That's okay. <laughs> that was a brain fart. 
uh, <laughs> fight hard enough for them. Now, some, you know, all insurance companies are not created equally, as we know. Sure. And so some are easier to get than others. Each insurance company has tiers. So it depends on which, you know, you have, if it's bronze, gold, silver, right. you know, platinum, whatever, it depends on what you have there. And so it really just depends. Now, each of the insurance, I mean, the pharmaceutical companies have um, patient assistance programs. So right. they do have savings accounts and savings plans that you can use in order to get them. Um, but you have to have a very specific diagnosis often, and you have to have a um, very specific type of commercial insurance. Right. If you're willing, now I don't like using the diagnosis um, diabetes or diabetes mellitus type two, unless I have to. And the reason is, is because it does affect your insurance. It affects your life insurance, your health insurance. Right. Right. And so, you know, don't allow that diagnosis to be used unless you have it. However, if you have it, don't fight it either, because then you can get, you can't get the treatment you need. Right. And so um, when people are on the verge, I use pre-diabetes or I use metabolic syndrome as a right. diagnosis, or sometimes I just use intolerance to oral glucose is another one. And okay. depending on the yeah. insurance company, it, sometimes it works right. because I can prove those things. And the other is, um, I test an insulin level, which many of us were never taught to do. Right. Yeah. We're just told check a hemoglobin A1C, check a blood sugar if they're normal, fine. However, we check them when we're fasting. They're often normal. Well, hemoglobin A1C is an average that doesn't right. tell us how high your blood sugars go. It just tells us where they are on average. A blood glucose level when fasting is often normal. Sure. Because we haven't eaten. Right. Um, and even if you check an insulin level, it would be possibly normal because it's in a response to food. And since all of this is based on what our body does when we've eaten certain foods, I always get my non-fasting. Okay. So that way I can see exactly what happens to a person when they're challenged by food, because that's really what we're talking about and what I'm treating. And if I don't know the, you know, something normal is not going to tell me anything unless they've eaten something. And so often what I'll do is what would be considered a modified glucose tolerance test. I just tell people drink something sweet right before uh -huh. getting their test. And so it's, it's a glucose challenge. It's a yeah. sugar challenge right before they get their test done. And then, then I get my answer. And, you and then the I can use that. And the, and the insulin. Level. I get insulin, blood sugar, hemoglobin, yeah. A1C if it hasn't been done within the last three months. And then I use that information to fight with insurance companies to pay for the medication. Nice. And I'll remind my audience, because I talk about this a lot as well, that mm -hmm. um, insulin is a fat storage hormone. Mm -hmm. And so insulin resistance is a problem because we get more and more insulin trying to control our blood sugar. And, and, and more and more insulin means more and more fat storage. Exactly. Yeah. And so what happens is we can catch diabetes way sooner if we check insulin levels because our insulin levels will be high long before anything else changes. Right. Right. And so even if, you know, someone chooses to not take medication, which is not absolutely necessary sure. often. Um, I often, if someone doesn't want to take medication, I give them a trial. I'm like, you know, you have three to four months. I can check again and see if what you're doing is helping. And if mm -hmm. it helps, then I'm like, great, we'll just keep doing what you're doing until it doesn't work anymore or if it doesn't work anymore. But yeah. if it doesn't stay the same, it's like the damage that's being done physiologically is just too great to allow it to keep going without doing something to help. Once you stop the process, then you can add on other things to reverse the need for medication. But I, you know, it's, it's again, it's one of those art of medicine things. It just depends on the person what their right. numbers look like, what their situation looks like. And, um, but with, um, but with the testing, um, like I said, it's not always done and the insulin levels aren't always checked. Right. And unfortunately, um, what I'm finding, and again, I have to fight with insurance companies for this. Sometimes insurance companies won't pay for that test. Fortunately, it's not um, that expensive, but they yeah. often won't pay for it just because they're like, that's not considered standard of care. Okay. It should be. Yeah. Yeah. And so when people 
to bring this up with their doctors, their doctor may say, we're not going to check the insulin level on that. Yeah. And that may be due to their training and their mm -hmm. own way of doing things. Or like you said, if they mm -hmm. think the insurance isn't going to cover it. Exactly. But some folks who would you say then, tell me if this is correct or not, because mm -hmm. I, like I said, I don't, I don't prescribe medications because I work online. Mm -hmm. um, so if someone has an elevated A1C and they're, but not to the diabetes level, but they're worried about medication, you would encourage them to go discuss this with their doctor because there may be a weight loss medication that also like helps fix some hormonal issues in their body. Mm -hmm. And so it's like a, it might be a double win that could be covered by insurance. Yes. And depending on where they live, I'll prescribe it. I can prescribe it electronically. Nice. So it's not, you know, so I can still get it covered for them and still fight to get it for them um, with, you know, whoever, but um, it really, so usually what I do is I do the test and get the information. I present it to them and say, these are your options. Which option would you like? And depending on what someone says, if they say, you know, well, I really want to exercise and get my muscle up and do this, whatever. Yeah. And if they are physically able to do that, if they're psychologically, socially, and physically able to realistically do that, then I was like, okay, we've got it. We'll create a plan. However, right. if someone is not physiologically, socially, or psychologically able, it's, a, it's, it's, um, it's wishful thinking. Right. And so then what I do is start pulling in all tools at their disposal to get them at least to a point where they're more likely to be successful. And then like any muscle, you start building it, your, 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 your discipline muscle, your yeah. willpower muscle, all of that grows with time, your self-esteem, your empowerment, your sense of this is really feeling good. You get this nice, you know, positive feedback of exercise and feeling good as right. opposed to exercise and feeling lousy because your joints and <laughs> your muscles, hurt, <laughs> right. you know? So when all of that starts to happen, then, you know, then you can always readjust. It's not like it's written in stone. You can always adjust right, later. Right. So what I always say is like, you know, often what I'll do is I'll start medication here, start muscle toning here, and then just do this. Nice. Until so that you can, as you need less medication, you can use less and go off of it mm -hmm. as you're working muscle tone, which also helps with blood sugar and exactly. also building the healthy eating habits, right? Exactly. If you get someone who comes to you and says, Dr. Tumor, just give me a pill then what, what do you say? <laughs> or a shot? I say, you know, usually what I say is, okay, well, let's discuss this. So <laughs> tell me about X. Tell me about Y. Tell me about Z. Tell yeah. me, have you ever done it? And then I start just testing and testing. Sure. And, um, and then I'm not sure if, I, I think my wife, I might be a little wonky at the moment. Can you still hear me? I can still hear you just fine. Yeah, it's working. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you can hear me. Okay. But I can see you just fine. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. Yeah, I can see you just fine still. So are you blanked out on me? I, I've got good Wi-Fi and I can see and hear you just fine. Um, I got a message that my Wi-Fi is unstable. So okay. this is probably going to be a section you're going to delete. I can out. hear you. Now I can hear you again. Okay, great. Yeah, I can hear you just Okay, fine. all right. Well, I'll just, so uh, good. So what I was saying is that um, often when someone says they just want a pill, I never just say, no, I'm not going to give you yeah. a pill. What I discussed is why do you feel that that's going to work? What is it that you think yeah. is going to work? You know, what is it that you're really looking for? Um, who told you um, this? And, and so often what I'll do is I just kind of work through and I ask a lot of questions. And of course, questions can be informative questions. Yeah, you know? definitely. And so as, you know, asking questions and then getting information, information back, I can use that information, their answers to say one way or the other, whether medication may be appropriate, but then also in there, the message, nothing is magic. There's other things that have to happen as right. well. Okay. And, and so, um, so I never say no, but then I also don't just say yes right away either. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. But if you, if someone came to you and said, I can't exercise, you know, people mm -hmm. have many, re there are reasons why people can't. Mm -hmm. And they said, but I don't really want to change how I eat. Um, could they take these medicines and lose weight? Would it be worth it? They to? can up to a point, but at the same time, I say, you know, yeah, that 
but then if they're if they're planning on staying on it for the rest of their lives which some people may have to even if they do change their eating habits and their sure. exercise habits um but um if someone says that to me um i usually listen and then yeah. slowly introduce things um okay. what that means is that they're afraid that they're going to fail that usually doesn't mean that they don't want to you know we always get this message oh it's because they're lazy or because often yeah. it's because they just don't know any better yeah. or it's simply because their blood sugars are at a point where it's affecting their moods it's affecting their thought processes it's affecting their self-esteem it's affecting right. all of that and so until we fix the blood sugar issue then all of a sudden their thought processes start changing they feel more empowered they start feeling better and then all of a sudden it's like hey you know what i really want to exercise Right. Whereas when it started, they weren't interested in exercise at all. Mm -hmm. Or, um, and for me, and I, and I don't push a lot of exercise right off the bat if, unless someone's already exercising. And yeah. the reason is um, when I started, I couldn't exercise. My heart, right. I was in congestive heart failure. And so I had to go through cardiac rehab first before I could even exercise. And yeah. so I always keep that in mind with people because there's lots of different reasons. And sometimes the reasons they think they can't exercise may not be true, or the reasons that they think they can exercise may also not be true. And so, um, you know, it's just a matter of assessment and really listening and um, just trying to meet a person where they are. Sure, yeah, that's so important. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. We've really talked, you know, we, I wanted to focus on these medications that are used mm -hmm. with diabetes and yes. blood sugar and insulin resistance. Cause mm -hmm. that's, I think where I, you know, we said it's not magic, but that's kind of where the magic is in 2022, mm -hmm. as far yeah. as what weight loss medicines are going to help people. Right? And I, I agree. And I think a lot of it is because they're not really putting out the message that these are treating a metabolic issue and that many people are walking around with unknown metabolic issues. Um, and then the others of the more other effective with loss medications actually treat depression. They're, de they're antidepressants really. Right. Right. And they never mention that. They just like, oh, they help you lose weight, but they don't really talk about the cause of why the weight gain happened in the first place. And so people think it's magic when really they're just being treated for a diagnosis that has gone undiagnosed. Undiagnosed. Yeah. And that's, yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Well, thank you so much. Can you tell us a little bit, you know, we didn't get just this at the beginning. You have both online and in-person um, ways that you work with people. So can you tell us a little bit about that? Okay. Well, my in-person is developing. I'm actually okay. creating a, a community weight loss um, organization in my community, which is Aiken, South Carolina. And that's in the works to be open spring. That's, that's okay. the goal. Um, well, and, and really it's, it's, yeah. and it's insurance companies that are the, kind of the, the rate limiting step in that. Cause sure. you have to jump through a lot of hoops to get them on board. Oh yeah. Um, and then online, I have uh, three programs, my, well, two, my group program, which has two levels. One is a little more individualized than the other. And it really is just to help people with various budgets so that they can still get my program, still get uh, coached by me but in a group setting in a way that's affordable. Nice. And then um, my executive is very much a concierge health, wellness, okay. and weight loss program, which you know is very individualized. So it's not the same for anyone. Gotcha, great. Do you have a, do you wanna say the name of your website? I will put all of okay. this in the show notes. So if people yes. wanna look in the show notes, they can find you on socials and your mm -hmm. website and all these good things. But okay, well, ahead. my website's easy to find. I am Dr. Toomer, and that's my website, drtoomer.com, and that's D-R-T-O-O-M-E-R.com. Wonderful. And all of my information's in there, my background, all of that. And then, um, of course, on Facebook, Dr. Catherine Toomer. I'm on Facebook. Okay. You can always find me there and follow me. Or um, And then from there, you know, of course, YouTube and all the rest. But right. um, everything's my name. I'm the actually the only Catherine Harmon Toomer MD online. So nice. There's no one no. else out there. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. There are a, about 10 million Heather Awads and yeah. which I would never have guessed, but, mm -hmm. but there yeah. are. So. <laughs> well, if I take out my maiden name, then yes, we get a whole bunch. But okay. as soon as I put Harmon in there, then all of a sudden, you know, 
it's there right. there's no one else but me nice so. nice well thank you so much for doing this i appreciate you sharing this information with my audience because it's it is complex mm -hmm. it and is. um and people have you know preconceived notions about whether they should take these things or not and what they actually mm -hmm. help. And mm -hmm. like you said, they, they're packaged sometimes as weight loss, sometimes as diabetes, and it's the exact same thing. Exactly, um, exactly. So and then, and of nice course, bed. you know, as family medicine, our, our first goal is to always try to do things without medication first. Right. You know, that's, but you know, at the same time, um, my philosophy also is I'm not gonna make someone push a boulder up a hill if I can help them pull it up with a tractor. Right. I love that. I love that. And we didn't talk about side effects, but it's something that someone should discuss with their own doctor because then they can um, look at their own really personalized situation, what's likely to happen for them, you know, what the yeah. benefits will be. And, um, mm -hmm. and I, and I, I worry when I talk about side effects because people often use that as an excuse not to take medicine they need. Right. Um, most people who want it don't care about the side effects. <laughs> Right, right. <laughs> but people like, who need it. it side effects generally uh scares them off and so i'm always very hesitant because you know when you think tylenol causes liver failure right we take it all the time uh oh yeah yeah and when you think that tylenol you know causes liver failure we don't stop taking tylenol when we have a right. headache yeah you know but <laughs> so <laughs> Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate you sharing this with my audience today. You're welcome. Well, thank you for having me. I really enjoyed this.